the future of testosterone. This is going to be so relevant for you and so important for doctors to understand where we are today and where we are headed because there are tens of millions of men on testosterone in this world and there will be tens and hundreds of millions of men coming on to testosterone. There's no question about it. The scientific data has proven that testosterone is effective for ameliorating men that have low testosterone with their symptoms. Of course, there are side effects. amazing to me and please I want you to understand and clinicians to understand that so many men are starting testosterone and they don't have technically low testosterone I need to bring that up in the beginning of this talk because the future you're going to see so many men even very young men using testosterone and again this is not steroid users for full muscle building these are just men that take testosterone to feel better it does work for them the anecdotal data is incredible we have to be very careful because we have to talk about studies on this and there are really no studies on that but yet the future of testosterone you're going to see more men taking testosterone that don't have low testosterone because it does work for them so we see but we have to be careful we have to understand what it's going to do to them so that's the first point next i have to use evidence-based research so there is a great resource online called f1000 research articles and i found a great article by experts in the world 2017 treatment of hypogonadism current and future therapies they did a great job in reviewing the current and what they see as the future therapies for testosterone they start off with injections of course because testosterone injections are the top of the podium nothing is going to shake nothing's taking down the injections at least for many many years why because the injections work because they're simple what do we have we have short acting intermediate acting esters testosterone propanate we have sipinate we have enanthate and we have combinations of esters we have testosterone undecanate which is injected usually by a physician or a healthcare provider every six to twelve weeks <clears throat> we have a new formulation testosterone enanthate in a subcutaneous pen auto injector once a week I've also seen testosterone being delivered like an insulin pump through an insulin pump. It's through a pump. That's incredible. The testosterone injections and the formulations are from the 1960s and they're here today and they are definitely going to be here tomorrow. Why? Because they're cheap and they work. They have side effects. The side effects are based mainly on the frequency and those peaks and those troughs. So what physicians and what men know is that you take small injections more frequently it's called micro dosing that's going to be the future and it's going to be especially those pumps you're going to see it delivered in some kind of a, a pump system like we do see insulin that's going to be the future and the amazing feature is that men feel so good on testosterone injections because we see an increase in the free testosterone that overloads those carriers albumin and sex hormone binding globin and of course there's no free lunch as you feel so good on those esters <clears throat> you're going to have a consequence of side effects the side effects are going to be of course from the top to bottom the hair loss the puffiness the acne the central nervous system effects and the mood destabilization potentially that comes also with feeling great and also comes with potentially being sexual but hypersexual again it's all going to be man per man and dose related so there's also going to be effects on the cardiovascular system that has to be looked into and has to be more studies we have to put attention into this and how do we 
give men testosterone and block those effects adversely on the heart. There's also gynecomastia. There's going to be effects in the prostate and, of course, itself. We have to look at the prostate that a man cannot have prostate cancer and receive testosterone. This is such a caveat. In the end of the day, I always say there's only two things that matter for men on testosterone, the heart and the prostate. Also, the side effect of esters is because of the high free proportion is that we have something called androgen induced erythrocytosis leading to polycythemia. There's no question that injections cause this more than other delivery mechanisms because the free testosterone goes up so high and that's why men feel good. The future, we have to look at this. And also with the testosterone undecanate, you have a very rare pulmonary oil microembolism, transdermal formulations. This is something been, that's been around for years and it's going to stay around. It's easy. They're not injections, so men who can't take injections will have naturally go for this. It does mimic the circadian rhythm, but in the end, it's inconsistent for men. We don't know why. It doesn't deliver testosterone consistently, certainly for every man. Some men it does, some men it doesn't. It Maybe because they have different types of skin, the oil and the type of skin, their hair, and that's going to be a problem. And at the end of the day, the delivery of this drug, testosterone, to a child or to your partner is an absolute contraindication for men that cannot control that. Next, testosterone pellets. This is a subcutaneous pellet that's slipped into the buttock region every three to six months by a physician. It's easy, it's not so expensive, but the problem is you have to go into the doctor to have that done. It's a procedure. There's infection, fibrosis, and there's also something where the pellet can actually extrude out of where it was placed, although that's quite rare. And again, <clears throat> unlike testosterone injections, the free testosterone doesn't go that high, but there's less side effects. Definitely something in the future, testosterone pellet. Oral testosterone, it's outside the United States, and it's testosterone undecanate that's dissolved into the lymphatic system, bypassing the liver system as oral anabolic steroids that are 17 alpha alkylated have a severe, severe dangerous uh, risk to the liver. So this is going to be a future. They're going to fix that somehow. I think they're going to get this to where it dissolves better because today you have to take it with fatty food. So you always have to eat food when you're taking it. And again, the concentrations, they're not consistent. Nothing is as great as the microdosing of testosterone injections. Alternatives to testosterone methodology, if you will, is there's a DHT gel, topical gel, dihydrotestosterone gel that's marketed in France and Belgium. And it's postulated that it works in the central nervous system and the muscles like TRT for men, although theoretically less side effects, they postulate, because it's DHT derived, it's going to have less intraprostatic issues and affect the prostate with BPH and potentially worsen a man who may have a prostate cancer. Next, it doesn't aromatize, which is true. So you're not going to get gynecomastia. Possibly less acne issues with this. No one knows if this is true. I have not seen the post-marketing research. In the end of the day, <clears throat> will it consistently deliver great mood and great sex and muscle uh, to the men that are on this DHT gel? That's going to be the future. I'm sure we're going to see this in the future. The concern for me on DHT gel is the DHT derived steroids. It just won't pan out and there will be side effects. Next. Something that everyone's heard of and everyone knows and many, many men use it. Human chorionic gonadotropin. We talked about and we saw in this article. Absolutely true. Cheap, very effective increases testosterone, also gets men fertile. So 
it's been used for many, many years. It's a big piece of post cycle therapy for men that use steroids, especially for fertility. The problem is it's many injections. You have to take this at least every other day or Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You have to reconstitute it and you have to refrigerate it. There's a lot of logistics, if you will, around this that limit the use of HCG. And there is down regulation. And the authors, they didn't see that. I don't think they realized that, that if you use HCG long enough, you're going to downregulate against it and you're going to need more. Also, you're going to get aromatization with this and you're going to get acne potentially more. You're going to get puffiness. And the brain, a lot of men will tell you they feel okay in HCG. They want to get the job done. They want to get that kid and fertile. And then they want to get off it and back on testosterone. Amazing, and I agree with this piece, they stated, hopefully it's going to be less adverse on lipids and androgen-induced erythrocytosis. Now, I agree with that. So many men, when they take esters, injectable esters, red cells skyrocket. It's just multifactorial, genetic, sleep apnea. So even teeny, teeny doses, these men still launch too much of a drive Urethocytic drive, and they get too much uh, really pronounced, dangerous, potentially dangerous uh, increase in red cells, polycythemia. So, I have used recently with great success small doses of HCG for men, and it increases their endogenous testosterone, and they do get some polycythemia, but not that much compared to the injection of the esters. Absolutely need to share this with you, need to share it with the doctors of the world. So that's a future, using HCG. I see it more for men that, that need to maintain fertility, maybe young men that want to be on testosterone, they need to maintain fertility, and of course with anabolic steroid using men, this is a mainstay of therapy for them. And also now for men that have androgen-induced erythrocytosis and severe uh, significant polycythemia. This is a miracle drug. We have to spread this. Next, clomiphene. Been around like HCG forever, part of pulse cycle therapy. Everyone knows it. It's cheap. It's oral, not injections. It is consistent for men. Over the years, I've seen this in men. I've prescribed this for men. And I have to tell you, there's a certain select group of men this will work for. And that's men that have not been exposed to steroids or enough testosterone in the past. So these are, I call them virgins. These are men that have low T and you give them Clomid and they can feel well. Definitely can feel well and the studies will support that. If you give Clomid, Clomiphene to men that have been exposed to steroids in their central nervous system and you use this as a sole agent, it could be horrific with severe depressive symptoms, even suicide ideation. So I have to tell you, and I have to let the doctors in the world know, healthcare providers, be very careful with this drug. But the future, there are racemic trans isomers. One of them is called enclomiphene. And there's been studies on this isomer that it works for TRT in men. So this is gonna be a future as well. The dangerous piece, as I said, it's going to be the selection of the man. You have to take the history. Also, because it's manipulating estrogen, it's a selective estrogen receptor modulator, you can get DVTs and pulmonary embolisms. We have to be careful with that. Also, there is a very, very rare adverse effect in the eyes for some men. But hopefully, this is going to be worked out in the future. Next, they talked about aromatase inhibitors. This is old news on the new news, is that men that are older, they have lower T levels and they have a higher level of estrogen. If we block that with a aromatase inhibitor, on paper, you do get an increased testosterone to estrogen ratio. Great. And the man will feel well for a while, but the studies and in real life that I've seen, because I've tried this for years, they won't consistently feel well I think it's more of a placebo, and they see that number on paper, yay, that's great, I should be feeling better, and they really don't, and it doesn't last. I'm sure there are men that it can last, but you can't live on a Romanase inhibitor indefinitely. It's going to affect the bones, it's going to affect the CNS, 
and it definitely affects the lipids adversely and it brings down that HDL level. We see that with the steroid users. So this is something very important. I don't see aromatase inhibitors in the future. SARMs, of course we have SARMs. So in the end of the day, I see SARMs up there in the podium with testosterone injections. Testosterone injections are not going away. We're gonna work around it, work around the risks with micro injections. SARMs are gonna come up, but they're not there today. The future is going to be SARMs, selective androgen receptor modulator, keeping the good, keeping the sexual feel in the brain, keeping the confidence, keeping the libido for men. At the same time, keeping the stimulatory aspects on musculoskeletal and the bones. But bypassing, no hair loss, no acne, got no gynecomastia, no heart worsening conditions, no prostate worsening of the conditions. This is going to be really, really tricky, and it will happen. I think you'll see a SARM in the next five years marketed, maybe 10, and it will work, of course, but it won't be that strong, and it will have side effects, you see? And that's why during this whole period, the master, or the chief, the, the main winner is going to be the injections, working around, again, the dangerous side of the injections. There was a 12-week study of a SARM called Anobo SARM, GTX024, and it improved muscle, physical function, and it improved insulin resistance. So there's the study that they showed for an example. Next, in the end of the day, you're going to see gene therapy. It's not ready for prime time. Gene therapy itself is here today for fixing up and affecting a single gene mutation, single gene anomalies, and very limited uh, aspects of gene therapy directly. Now, think about testosterone replacement. You have amazing interplay of the CNS and the gonads, not to mention other systems. This is gonna to have to be multi-gene therapy, but indeed, in 50 years or further, of course, we will be using gene therapy. So, that sums it up. I hope uh, everyone learned something. I certainly learned a lot when I did this research in this article, and I have to give the hats off to these doctors. They did a great job on this, and we definitely will need more testosteronologists because there's so many men that are enjoying testosterone, but we have to keep it safe. I hope this helps. Thank you so much.